This video will introduce you to the hobo water level loggers you'll use during hydrogeology field camp. These water level loggers are pressure transducer instruments, which means that they measure the total pressure above them, whether it's barometric or if they're submerged, a combination of barometric and water pressure. The sensors we use come in two different styles, both seen here, one with a black plastic body and another with a stainless steel housing. Notice the, the range of the instrument is printed directly on the body itself, so 0 to 4 meters or 0 to 13 feet. So it's important not to deploy these sensors beyond that depth of 13 feet below a static water level. So each of these has a removable end cap uh, with a ring in it used to attach it to a cable for deploying down a well. You also remove the end cap to communicate between the logger and a computer for setting up and reading out data from the instrument. Here's one of the U20 water level loggers with the end cap removed so you can see the fiber optic communication terminals. And here's the optic USB base station. This is a communication shuttle which allows you to connect one of the water level loggers to a computer for setting up the instrument and reading out the data. Above it are two different adapters for each particular style of water level logger. Once the base station is connected to the USB port of a computer, you will use the Hobo Aware software to set up and read out the loggers. So to link to a logger, you first need to gently and carefully unscrew the end cap. Do not use any more pressure than necessary as this may damage the pressure transducer. So attach the proper adapter to the base station. For the plastic house loggers, there's a notch in the adapter which lines up with a ridge on the housing to make sure it is connected properly. For the stainless steel loggers, there's a flat edge which aligns with the adapter, and this makes sure it connects properly. When you put the end cap back on, again be very gentle and careful. Twist slowly and do not try to over tighten the cap or again you may damage the instrument. When I first open the HoboWare software, I can use the device drop down menu to access tools for communicating with the logger. So I can use the launch dialog which allows me to set up my logger for reading data. I can read out data from my logger. I can check the status of the logger itself and I can also stop it from reading. So to set up my logger I'll select this first option here to launch. Here in the launch logger dialog, I can set up my instrument to record the pressure. I'll change the name. Uh, I'm going to deploy this in well CBL4 in the bottoms for monitoring a slug test. I can see the state of my battery is good. The batteries last for about five years in the field before they need to be replaced. Here under sensors, I can use the checkboxes to select which parameters I want to record. I'll do both absolute pressure and the temperature because I can use the temperature to help me determine uh, the water level later on and I'll show you how to do that. Here under deployment you can specify the interval uh, between measurements. So this can be adjusted from one second to 12 hours or a custom interval can be specified and it'll tell you how many samples uh, it can take or how long it can sample until the instrument is full at that particular logging interval. Because I'm going to be doing slug testing in a well in the bottoms and monitoring it with this pressure transducer, I'm going to take very rapid measurements to get an accurate representation of that slug test. Here I can specify when I want to start logging. You can say now and it will begin logging as soon as you say start. You can specify an interval or you can select a date and time later on. Um, which may be useful if you're going to deploy a bunch of sensors in the field and you have to travel between the field site and where you're actually setting these up. So I'll just specify now to go ahead and start logging because I'm going to deploy it in the field immediately. Then I'll say start. It tells me the logger is being configured and now it's ready, it's good to go. When you take the water level logger out into the field to deploy it down a well, you'll need to either find or make a cable for hanging the logger in the well itself. So we have these cables here that we've made, which just use some metal wire 
fastened in a loop that's attached to some fishing swivels. And in that way, we can attach one end to the ring on the water level logger and the other end to a ring that's attached at the top of the well itself. So all you need to do is hook up the logger to this cable and gently lower it down the well. And especially when you're lowering it below the water table, you want to slowly uh, and carefully put this water level logger into the water itself so that you don't shock and damage the pressure transducer sensor. So here in this well, you can see that there's a, a pressure transducer that's hanging just a couple of feet below the top of the casing, and this is measuring the barometric pressure. Another is deployed much further down the well beneath the water and recording the water level measurements. When you deploy a water level logger underwater, it's important to have it deep enough so that if you're doing, for instance, slug testing, as you drop that slug into the well and remove it, it doesn't bump into or, or interfere with that deployed water level logger. But you also don't want it so deep that you begin to damage the sensor itself. Since our sensors are rated to 13 feet, your target should probably be around 7 feet beneath the static water level. So if you're using a slug that's, say, 5 feet long, uh, and you drop it into the well, you have, say, two feet of space between the logger itself and the bottom of the slug, but the, the logger won't be so deep that you begin to damage the sensor. So when you make a cable, you have to account for the length from the top of the casing to the static water level, the length of the slug, plus a couple of feet. Now I'm going to open the HoboWare software to read out some water level measurements and some barometric pressure. So I'll open the HoboWare program. Barometric pressure and water level measurements were recorded for a simple experiment um, just in a tub to use as a demonstration for you. So notice when I open HoboWare, I have my, um, my sensor already attached to the USB base station, and down here in the bottom, I can see that this instrument is, has connected to the software. If I want to read out my data, I can go to File, or rather Device, and say Read Out, or I can also select it from the, the bar at the top of the screen here. It says it's currently logging. Um, because it's still recording data from the prior experiment, I'll say stop to stop the measurements. So it's read out the device here. I'm going to choose where I want to save this hobo file, uh, which is a, a unique format to the software. I'm going to call this barometric test.hobo and I'm saving it to the desktop on this computer. Uh, when you actually record or download data from these you'll put your group number and the date um, and some sort of description whether it was water level or rather barometric pressure or total pressure. So I'll say save and then a plot setup opens. This is going to plot my data here in the hobo software. So I'm just going to call this barometric for my description. You can plot um, either the pressure or the temperature or both and you can also determine which events you want to include on the plot as a reference. Uh, I'll just accept all my defaults and I'll say plot. Okay, So my black line here is, is the, the pressure in PSI. The blue line is the temperature in degrees Fahrenheit which is what I had it set up to read. So notice here the temperature was fairly steady around 14.385 PSI, um, but some slight changes where it was moved from uh, the lower level of an apartment to the upper level of an apartment back down to the, the lower level. Okay. Now if I want to save these data to a spreadsheet, I'll go to File and Export Table Data, and this will allow me to export a CSV file that I can bring into Excel. And, uh, you can select which of these events 
and data series you want to export I'll just select all of them say export and I'll, s I'll save this um, as the barometric test.csv on the desktop okay now I've disconnected my logger that was recording the barometric pressure and I've attached the logger that I had submerged in the tub during this test experiment so now I want to read out those data when I do, I'm going to use a file that recorded the barometric pressure to subtract out the barometric pressure and determine the water level. So I'll select readout device. I'll save my file here as water level test.hobo. I'll say save. Now I'll leave these same um, parameters for the plotting and which events I want to record. And I can use this barometric compensation assistant. And what this is going to do is read my barometric pressure file and do an automatic subtraction. So I'll open this here. You can specify the density of the fluid, whether it's just a constant for fresh salt or brackish water. You can manually input one or you can also derive from the temperature channel of your instrument itself at which assumes the freshwater density. So I'll just leave that as my selection here. Here I'm going to say use barometric data file and I'll choose my barometric test uh, data dot hobo. I'll say open and the resultant series name is going to be water level. I'll create that series. Okay, so I got a warning here, a barometric data file offset. What this is essentially telling me is that because I stopped recording my barometric pressure before my water level sensor pressure, that there is a discrepancy in the end of these files, and it's asking me how I want to deal with it. Uh, because both sensors were in the air, and for these last few measurements, I'm not interested in them anyway I'm just going to take option two and apply the last barometric pressure value to all the pressure readings after the end of log barometric data and my water level will essentially be zero because um, they should be reading the same barometric pressure okay <clears throat> so water level my units I can select here I'll leave these in feet and we'll say plot okay so here's my resulting plot with my green line here being the water level in feet which you can see is on a scale from 0 to 0 0.5 feet so here at the beginning of my test I had not yet submerged the instrument so it's erroneously thinking that it's under about 0 0.45 feet of water then it became submerged and you can see some noise in the measurements here. Um, the water level was static uh, until about this point here when the tub was drained out. And you can see that decrease in the water level here. So that's how you go through um, reading out your data file and using the barometric pressure assistant. Now I want to export those data to a CSV, to a table. And I'll just keep all these defaults here. We'll say export. And we'll call this water level test.csv and save the file.